Um, our next, Joe, that was terrific. Thank you. Um, <laughs> our, 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 next, our next speaker is Dr. Evan Alley, uh, who is a medical oncologist and uh, uh, in, uh, in addition to being just superbly competent and, and bright, is, is just one of the nicest people. It's just such a pleasure to work with and uh, uh, I, can't, I can't welcome him enough to the program. Evan. Thanks. It's a it's a, an honor and a privilege to uh, be here today to speak to you. Um, I know a lot of uh, you out in the audience, and I'm sure I'm new to some of you as well. Um, so today I'm going to talk about the role of chemotherapy in the treatment of mesothelioma. The this is sort of a chemo 101. So some of this uh, may be uh, uh, review, um, and some of it may be new. So first of all, let's just say what is chemotherapy. So chemotherapy refers to medications that kill living cells. Um, you know, I sometimes tell patients that these are poisons, because I mean, they really are, but they're controlled poisons. They're things that, these chemicals that, that can kill cancer cells, and, but the problem is they also kill other cells. So chemotherapy preferentially kills rapidly dividing cells, and that's where the cancer cells come into play. But chemotherapy side effects are often related to the damage to normal tissue. Uh, Normal cells that grow quickly are more susceptible to chemotherapy, uh, such as hair follicles, uh, the, the cells in the GI tract, uh, the mucous membranes, and the bone marrow. So you see side effects like hair loss and nausea, um, mouth sores, and uh, low blood counts. Those are all common complications of uh, some chemotherapy agents. When do we give chemotherapy? Well, there's different settings in which we give chemotherapy. So one setting is as what's called adjuvant chemotherapy or adjuvant treatment. Adjuvant treatment refers to an, an adjunctive, an addition to a surgical a procedure. So in this case, we would give chemotherapy after the removal of a cancer, and this would, the, the goal of that would be to help prevent recurrence of a cancer. Um, we can sort of do the opposite thing and actually give the chemotherapy before surgery, and that's called neoadjuvant chemotherapy. Um, the goal there would be to not only help prevent a recurrence of a cancer once it's removed, but also perhaps shrink the tumor down, make it easier to remove. And then the other setting in which we give chemotherapy is for palliation or palliative chemotherapy. In this case, that we're giving chemotherapy with the goal of controlling the disease, keeping it in check, uh, hopefully uh, letting someone live with their disease longer. Um, but in this case, would not be with the intent to cure the disease. So I want to talk a little bit about the historical perspective of chemotherapy for mesothelioma. Many of you probably have heard that this disease is resistant to chemotherapy. Does chemotherapy really even work in this disease? Well, you know, decades uh, have gone by with uh, different kinds of chemotherapy uh, treatments for this, and not a lot of uh, progress was made. Uh, you know, prior to 2003, there really wasn't a proven treatment that really made a big impact on patients. Uh, and there was uh, a lot of debate of whether chemotherapy was really of any benefit at all. Uh, prior to 2003, single agent treatment with a drug called cisplatin was really the standard of care. Um, did it provide much benefit? Mm, a little bit. Um, it really wasn't uh, a great uh, home run, and it had a lot of toxicity by itself, but you kind of wonder, is that toxicity really worth the, the, the payoff? Is the, is the, you know, do you get really any bang for the buck there? So we certainly knew that new treatments were needed, new active drugs were needed, and this is what happened in 2003 with a drug called Pemetrexid, or Lemta. This really was a landmark study uh, in, that showed uh, a real benefit to patients for the first time. This, in this study, cisplatin as a single agent was compared to cisplatin plus Pemetrexid. And what we, what we saw was that the response rates more than doubled uh, with this combination treatment. And it really wasn't any more toxic. The patients tolerated it just as well. Um, and, uh, and overall, they lived longer, significantly longer. Uh, so this really was a, a, a landmark study, really was a breakthrough in how we treat uh, mesothelioma with chemotherapy. And this combination of cisplatin and pemetrexid has become the standard of care for first-line treatments. And responses to chemotherapy can be dramatic. Now, this is not everybody, of course, but it just shows you that, wow, you know, this is a patient who had chemotherapy or had the, the disease before treatment and after, and there was a dramatic response. So, you know, this is something that we look at and say, there is hope for this. This really is uh, some amazing responses that we see. We know we can, we can build on this. 
So what do you expect with chemotherapy? Well, you know, most patients actually tolerate chemotherapy quite well. Um, the fatigue is probably the most common thing that, that a patient would, would experience and complain about. Um, we have excellent medications to control other side effects of chemotherapy. You know, you can't think about this treatment as it was 20 years ago. Uh, chemotherapy uh, used to be a horrible uh, thing to go through with, uh, you know, some nausea and vomiting in the hospital and, and always uh, feeling sick. But we have great medicines to prevent the side effects of chemotherapy. So most patients really don't get sick from treatment. Um, we have medicines to help support the blood count so they don't drop down too low. Um, and chemotherapy that we most commonly use with this disease doesn't even cause hair loss. So chemotherapy uh, for this disease is generally given intravenously, uh, but it's safe to give through a regular vein. You don't have to have a port placed uh, for the chemotherapy treatments that we, that we use for this disease. Um, sometimes we have to put in a port if the veins aren't good enough, if they're just not, you know, have a hard time uh, getting an IV catheter in, then we can use a port, but it usually isn't necessary. And these are standard treatments that are uh, given as an outpatient. You don't have to come into the hospital for it. Um, and often, if, uh, if it's a standard therapy, it's not at one of our clinical trials, and you can get some of those treatments closer to home. So many patients come uh, for our program, they travel great distances, and we can make recommendations and they can go home and get this treatment with their local oncologist. Well, how much chemotherapy is enough? It's a, a really important question, and we're still trying to figure that out. We know that most patients receive a maximum response to this treatment, this combination of hemotrexid and cisplatin, after about four to six cycles. And a cycle uh, is uh, a three-week period. It's a one-day treatment, and then we repeat it every three weeks. Um, so the question was, well, if a little bit's good, is more better? Is it better to continue on with chemotherapy? And there, was some, there has been some uh, small studies and, and data that suggest that maybe continuation of one of these drugs, pemetrexid, uh, could be better. We don't know for sure, but there was uh, you know, a, an inkling of a, a possibility that it could be true. So there is now a, a trial that's ongoing that we are enrolling patients uh, for maintenance chemotherapy. I mean, just like any other disease, um, uh, diabetes or high blood pressure, you have to stay on a medicine to keep it under control. And that concept has now moved into the oncology world as well. Should we be using these medicines uh, to control the disease in the long term? So this is a randomized trial that we're enrolling in, and patients are uh, randomized to either continue on with uh, Lymta, Pemetrexid by itself, or just be observed, which is the standard of care. And so we'll, uh, the results of this trial will help us define what is the optimal duration uh, for treatment for this disease. So that's, uh, you know, the, the, where we are with the first-line treatments. Is there something that else that we could do to make that treatment better? Is there other, other drugs, are there other uh, approaches that can uh, make chemotherapy work better or better target the, the, uh, the cancer? So there's ongoing research and that we are involved with. Uh, looking at different uh, uh, targets in these cancers. So cell signaling pathways, these are you know, proteins inside the cells that turn a cell on and make it divide and proliferate. Um, is there a way to target those, identify what's, what proteins are important and target those to shut the cells down? Are there mutations in the genes of, of these cancer cells that can be targets uh, uh, that we could either provide the best therapy for or is there something on that's turned the cell on that we can target and shut down? And then one other area of, of a lot of research is looking at the blood vessels inside tumors, not actually targeting the tumor cell, cell itself, the cancer cell itself, but target its environment, target the blood supply to the tumors. Uh, we have a trial ongoing now, um, it's called the NGRTNF study. Um, this is looking at a, a novel uh, molecule that combines a tumor homing peptide uh, with a uh, human tumor necrosis factor alpha protein. This is a, a cytokine that's an important part of the immune system. So what this does is it targets the blood vessels inside tumors. Um, it has a couple of effects. We know it increases the permeability of the blood vessels. It allows chemotherapy to seep out better into the tumors. And it also damages the tumor blood vessels and prevents them from adequately supplying a tumor with oxygen. And if you can starve a tumor, it will die. So this trial we have, we're enrolling patients, is for patients who have had first-line therapy, but the disease has progressed, it's come back. Uh, patients are randomized to receive a standard second-line chemotherapy drug with or without the, uh, the experimental drug, NGR, TNF. It's a double-blinded study. We don't know which, what a patient's getting, um, so it's, uh, but it's an important uh, part of our, of our ongoing research in this disease. So it's an ongoing study that we're enrolling patients in. 
What about other things beyond chemotherapy? You're going to hear a lot today about some of the novel approaches that we have in our, in our program. And one of those is immunotherapy and looking at, uh, uh, targeting, uh, looking at the immune system to target the, the cells and target the cancers. And there's a variety of ways that are, that are being explored to do that, uh, using vaccines to, uh, uh, to uh, tumor proteins to enhance an immune response, looking at novel medications that are able to activate immune cells. So one of the things in cancer that happens is that the tumor environment sort of shuts down the immune system. Uh, you know, a tumor should be foreign, it shouldn't be there, but it can shut down the immune response. And there's ways, we have new medicines that are uh, emerging that are, allow the immune system to be turned back on again. So that's an area of, that we're uh, looking into uh, for, for research. And then you'll hear more today about our gene therapy program to stimulate an immune response and also this uh, T cell redirection uh, to make these uh, immune cells target the cancer directly. So I think uh, when I look at this slide, I see this as the sun rising, not the sun setting, the sun rising on hope for this disease. Thank you. Evan, that was, that was great. Thank you very much. I think those of you who, who don't know Doc, I mean, I think you get a sense of, you know, our glass is half full, you know, we're going after this thing, we do it as a team, and I, I have to tell you, um, you know, the, the passion that Dr. Alley brings to this and, and, and the sort of oversight that even I can understand the different options is uh, his ability to reduce it to understandable language is, is something that you just uh, witnessed and is really uh, an integral part of the team.